I'm State Representative Carolyn Tomei, and you're watching Milwaukee Today. Only we're doing a series of shows about the history of Milwaukee, so we're calling it Milwaukee Yesterday. I have with us today Shirley and Arlie Brown. Arlie had the Perry's Pharmacy for many years, and Shirley has been very active in uh, issues around Milwaukee. We're going to be talking today about Milwaukee Yesterday. Welcome. Thank Shirley and, and Brownie. Yeah. Arlie Brownie. 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 <laughs> Shirley, you were very active in Milwaukee. When did you come to Milwaukee? We came to Milwaukee in 1959 when Brownie graduated from Oregon State. He went to work at Perry's, and uh, so at that time we brought our little family and moved to Milwaukee. And uh, it only took us a couple of years then to get involved in, in local issues. And right. Things. What were some of the issues that you got involved in? Well, the first thing I got involved in was uh, the uh, library. Um, Where was the library in those days? This at, was in the 50s, right? This was in the, well, 59. Okay. Uh, before that, the library had been in Mr. Perry's pharmacy. He started it years ago. And then it moved to City Hall, which is where the city manager's office is now. They're and, right in City Hall on the first right floor. Right, on the first floor and down the end of that hallway where the used to be a hallway down there and then the end were the library books. And uh, there was one table about this size and uh, that was the study table and a desk and then the rest were all books. And, and uh, the library uh, was funded a small amount from city budget. The books, a lot of the books were donated or had been bought by friends of the library monies. Um, then um, the county would also come in about once a month and loan the books off of the bookmobile. And they would get books off of that and put them on the shelves and give them the ones back that they had put in there the month before. I see. And that's when I got involved in the library. Uh, Ray Renfro at that time was on the library board. And Ray was with the pharmacy. And Ray was with the pharmacy, and so he s called me and said, would I be interested in doing this? And and I did not in know what it involved, but I said, sure. I I only had three kids, and I could get involved in anything. <laughs> right. And um, so that's when I started getting involved in city library thing. And the city at that time had... Um, a rule you could only run for two terms for any of the uh, committees or uh, trustees or whatever mm -hmm. they had. You and know. were they two two year terms? No, four they were four year, four -year terms. terms. Okay. But my first year I was on was a five year term for some reason. The library board at that time had a five year term. And then when I came on the board, the state began to insist that you stick with the state guidelines. For libraries. For libraries. Okay. And one of that was that your local board of trustees were only a four-year term. Ah, okay. And so I served my eight years there. And then I was appointed to the county library board. And that, again, was another four-year term. And um, I resigned from that then. Well, tell us what brought on <laughs> okay. that resignation. What brought it on was that at that, that time, the cities that had their own libraries were giving service to the people that lived outside of the city limits, uh, service for nothing, because the county was giving them like a thousand dollars a year or something like that, mm -hmm. plus loaning them books, plus loaning them books. And um, when I got on the county library board, well, part of it, of course, started when I was on the city board, I became aware of this discrepancy. And, and so when I got appointed to the county board, I took more and more interest in what was happening with that. And so I began to put more, and we began as a board to put more and more pressure on the county commissioners to fund the libraries more. To fund the local libraries, local that libraries. Were in the different cities. Yeah, to give the service then to the out of city mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. And so uh, in the middle 70s, what, probably 74, 75, it was beginning to get the point where we wanted him to to ask for a levy to run the county library so there would be more money for the cities to give this service and they wouldn't do it and wouldn't do it so the county commissioners the county commissioners the yeah they wouldn't put it on the ballot and of course they had to do that in order for us to do it they had to give the permission and and get the legal mm -hmm. approach uh, so in 74 75, I resigned from the uh, county library board with a big letter and 
things bringing to their attention the discrepancy of the money uh, that was used to serve these out-of-city people. When you say out-of-city, you mean out of Oregon City? No, out of, uh, well, out of every little city in the county okay, so we that just... had their own library. Okay. And almost every little town in, in Clackamas County did have their own library, and they were willing to do this uh, for the county people until they realized that over 50% of their people using the libraries were people that lived outside of the, the city limits. The city limits. Yeah. And this was for almost every little city in, in the county. And it's still true for Milwaukee. I, I'm not yeah. sure what the percentages, yeah. but a yeah. large percentage of people use yeah. the library in Milwaukee. And now the that. levy that they have every three or four, three years, I think it is, they had last time, um, that pays for that amount. Mm -hmm. And the people who live outside of the cities are are levied the taxes to help pay for that library service. Then. Right. So how was it publicized when you left well, the it, county? Well, then there were some board. local newspapers and there were letters to the editor. I wrote, you know, letters to the editor. I was interviewed by the different newspapers, the Oregon City and the and the uh, Milwaukee Review and and the Oregonian uh, and uh, made it very public. I was interviewed on a couple of the news stations and. Uh, realized at that time I had a crooked mouth and I did look too honest. <laughs> but I must have did okay because they passed the levy. <laughs> that was the first time that the county then passed a, passed a library a levy. Yeah, levy. soon after that, yeah, they yeah. passed the library levy then. So in some ways you're really responsible for us being able to get county money. To well, I, I like libraries. to think so, but then that may be my old age. <laughs> you know, you forget and you add to it. But... Uh, uh, I really was a library user and a, and a library person, and so it was not difficult for me to get involved in that. Right. So and, what were some of the other issues that were going on inside Milwaukee in those days? Well, I remember the budget, um, the levy um, for the city budget was not being passed one year in the 60s. I remember going to all these budget committee meetings and, and the council meetings, and going with the librarian, she and I would go and sit through these meetings, which was a whole new thing. They didn't know what to do with with extra people there at that time. And at the same time, this is when Bill Hupp and Jim Backenstoss, anybody who knows history of Milwaukee knows these names, they began to get really active in uh, fighting the budgets and things, thinking the city was spending too much money for this and that. So they didn't want these budgets to They didn't be want these budgets to pass. So uh, one year, and I'm sorry I can't remember what year it was, um, the city borrowed money to pay their employees because there was no budget, no levy passed in order for them to pay for their budgetary funds. So the city didn't have any money Yeah, no money to pay, to pay the, the employees. Yeah. And that was, uh, besides the city employees, I mean, that was the police, that was fire, fire in those that days. Was, yeah, in those, yeah. yeah. And yeah. they were the library, uh, the, the city engineer, the street guys, you know, everything sure. that was city. They had, they had to wait so long before they could put it back on a ballot again to pass it. And yeah, there yeah. had to be a 30-day wait or something like yeah. that between right. levies being put up for a vote. So whenever it came up to vote, there were these people who were pretty vocal who yeah. really who, talked against yeah. it. Mm -hmm. And it didn't pass. And it didn't pass. And so here they were the 1st of June, and we're supposed to have a new bud, you know, new ability to levy this money, and it wasn't there. So what happened? So um, at that time, Mr. Peak, who is not Les Peak, it was his father, who owned the Peak Mortuary, um, loaned the money to the city. I don't know whether they asked him or whether he just volunteered it or what, but I remember that, that he loaned the money for that month to pay the city employees. Isn't that amazing? And so that they, because they couldn't levy, I mean, they couldn't, they couldn't levy any taxes without permission from the people. And the people had said no, and here they were with no funds. Oregon has a real unique system that way, I understand that, at least at that time it was uh -huh. a unique thing. Right. And, uh, that they couldn't levy any monies until the budget was, or the levy was passed. And so uh, quickly then the people realized what they had, were doing right. and passed the, the levy. Right. And I don't remember whether they'd been cut or not. You know, at that time, $10 was a big cut then. You know, I can remember 
them quibbling over one typewriter, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I kept thinking, you're talking about a hundred dollar typewriter, and you know, it just seemed so. But it, it was really important to, yeah. to the people then. Right. Well, it still and is. It still in, is. In yeah. Some of these budget meetings. Yeah. 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 It really is. Pretty ridiculous. So. And then, of course, eventually I got on the city budget committee and got from the other side of the table too. So, it was. It's been an interesting life in Milwaukee. Uh, so you, as I understand, you have an honorary life membership. It's in the Oregon Library Association. Say more about that. Okay, the Oregon Library Association is a group, um, they're still active, I still get newsletters and things from them, uh, that a group of librarians, school, uh, public, college, um, that, uh, and, and also trustees are involved in this count or statewide association in Oregon. And they do a lot of lobbying. I, I can't help but think maybe you've had a couple come by your door, maybe. Probably uh, so. Of, for library things. And um, excuse me, I need to get a drink. Yes, uh -huh. yes, it's fine. Uh, Brownie, can you remember any of the things that were going on in the city at that time when uh, Peak was loaning the money to the city? Well, not specifically that, but there was uh, way back then, even there was a talk about junior high school being torn down and building a big shopping center. Oh, that's right. That was in the 60s, I think, also. And I remember the papers coming down interviewing the businessmen on Main Street, and they would ask him, well, what do you think about you know this and putting in this big supermarket or whatever shopping center? And, and Red Basler said, it's fine as long as it doesn't have a grocery store. And Hargrave said, it's fine as long as it doesn't have a drug store. And you know, it was OK as long as it didn't compete with me, which was kind of foolish because sometimes competition actually stimulates your right. own business. But that junior high thing has been going on forever since then. It still right. is now. But uh, that was one of the big things. And then the old problem of Excuse parking me. downtown has been a problem for years. And, uh, they still talk about that. But, yep. but nothing specific with the budget except like what she's saying there. Yeah. Um, well, surely, go back to your story about being on the, the honorary uh, library. Uh, the Oregon Library Association, and I, I got involved in that when I was on the local board. Uh, at that time, there was money coming down from Washington, D.C. for library services. And as part of that, the state was given monies uh, to organize uh, the trustees and organize the librarians into uh, this o Oregon Library Association. Um, monies and so I got involved in that as an as a trustee uh, so the Oregon Library Association at that time when I got mine do you remember the year no nope. you looked at the thing last night I looked at it the year. <laughs> anyway I at that time I was one of only three people who had ever been given an honorary life membership in the Oregon Library Association as a trustee not as a librarian and uh, there was also, um, at that time, the, um, uh, there was money coming down for the governor's, um, there was a governor's council on libraries that delegates were chosen then to go back to Washington, D.C. for a big meeting. This was in the days of Johnson presidency. Mm -hmm. That's how old I am. <laughs> um, and Joy Burgess at that time was city council person, and she and I went to these meetings and together and things. So you went to the meeting in Washington, D.C.? No, I didn't get to go because I I had to be voted on with the librarians because I was a trustee. Ah. She was voted on as a city council person to go. So she went, and I didn't get to go because I the librarians went, which was more important. And um, uh, at that time, I was just glad to be the governor, saying we met down at Willamette University for five days. I used to go to these meetings and leave him to take care of the kids in the house and the, his job, and he would get his parents to come up and help. But I was probably liberated long before that name ever came out. <laughs> and you didn't even know it. Charlie. I didn't even know it. I just assumed that was part of me was to get to go to all these meetings, and he would stay home with the kids. <laughs> <laughs> and it worked out fine for all those years when the kids were little, and, and uh, so. Uh, then we went from that, the Oregon Library Association, uh, I got involved in in the schools. 
Tell us about that. You were on the school board. I was on the school board. Now, how for, did you get involved in the schools? Well, my kids were going to um, Llewellyn grade school. And the principal over there was uh, Don Emberlin. And if you got your name on a list of volunteers, you got called. And I started being active in PTA because I thought that's what all mothers did mm -hmm. when they didn't work full time or didn't work at all. Most of us didn't at that didn't time. Didn't work outside the home. Work outside the home, no. And um, so I got involved in the PTA and then I began to get involved in, in uh, district wide things, the district budget committee. And at that time there was not the unification. Uh, we weren't all one big North Clackamas school district. It was the, just Milwaukee, Milwaukee Elementary School. And then the Union High District was another district of the high schools. The high school was separate. It was district. separate, yeah. The high schools were separate from the elementary. And then there was the elementary, Milwaukee Elementary, there was the Concord Elementary, there was the Oak Grove Elementary, right. the Clackamas Elementary. And then in uh, 1970, 71, they unified. And when I went That's the, when it became North Clackamas? North Clackamas okay. District 12, yeah. And that's when I got more involved, of course. And then I was doing a lot of volunteer work at the local school and, and at the high school. By that time, my kids were up in the high school. And, and so I was doing things down there. Mm -hmm. And um, at, then they said, well, why don't you run for school board? I had been on this, the uh, school budget committee for a couple of years then. So I decided I would try. And I must have had more friends than I knew because I got elected. I beat two men. <laughs> All right, sure. Of course, one of them said his wife told him how to vote on everything. So I got <laughs> at the interview was with the teachers. Um, it was a uh, struggle at that time because they had just almost had a strike the year before with the teachers and things. And there was a lot of bitterness left and um, there were three of us women that got elected that year to the board and all of a sudden, and Charlotte Rice was already on the board, so all of a sudden, <laughs> seven of us on the board and four of them were women. Now who were the other people on the board? Uh, Marilyn Wright, Donna Smith, um, Jim Redman, Jim Redman uh, Marv Law. Yeah. Who was the other one? Nothing. There was another one that, another man, yeah. another oh, man that was only there uh, a short time, uh, and uh, boy, how things leave your mind. Uh, I'll, I'll I, think of it probably later in the oh, morning. No, Four o'clock in the morning, I wish yeah. I remember. So, Shirley, how long were you on the board? I was on the board eleven years. Oh, wow! And then I chose not to run. Um, the first, my first time I ran was for a three-year term. It was a term that had the man had uh, bowed out, and so I. Had a three-year term, and then I had two four-year terms. Ah. Um, four, yeah, mm -hmm. eight and three is eleven. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and um, um, that's when I kind of retired from things. I just kind of, oh, I stayed involved in the library, friends of the library, and, and stayed involved in that. But I really kind of backed off. And once I gave it up, I gave it up. I well, physically, it began to be more difficult. Yeah. And um, so I just decided it was time for me. Yeah. For you. And people said, aren't you bored? I'm still not bored. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. I'm still not bored. And you have four children. And we do they live in the area? Oh, yeah. They all live close. Oh, uh, we nice. have three grandchildren. Our grandson is 22. And he's uh, at Portland State. Great. We have two granddaughters. Uh, Sheena is eight, 17, going to be 18 in May. Mm -hmm. And Melissa's 14. She's That's great. They belong to my son. Tim belongs to my daughter. Good. Yeah. Now, Brownie, you went to U of O. Nope. Oregon, no. Oregon State. Oregon State. Got my wrong. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll never be forgiven for that one. <laughs> so, what brought you to to Milwaukee, and what brought you to Oregon State? Well, I went. I went to a small high school, initially, a little town in Lowell, down by Eugene. 120 kids in the school, and so when I came out of there, I didn't want to jump into a big college, so I had a letter of uh, scholarship offer from Clark Junior College in Vancouver uh, to play basketball, so I went over there because it was a smaller setup. Uh, that's where I met Shirley. Um, 
did my two years at Clark and then transferred to Oregon State, and Oregon State only because that's the only school of pharmacy in the or in Oregon. And you already knew you wanted to be yeah, a pharmacist. Yeah, and that's where I had to go. Went down there for three more years, and then graduated from there in 59. At the time of graduation or that last year, you go out and interview different stores to see where you're going to go, and I went to Medford and Silverton and Salem and, and Milwaukee, and we were trying to make a decision, and I was heading for, I think it was Silverton to talk Salem. to them, or Salem, one of the two. Salem. And uh, I said, well, let's go up and see what Perry's. We'd already talked to them. Went up there, and they, um, as I was walking in the door, they were getting ready to call me or write a letter and say, we wanted you. Even so, before they'd met you? Oh, they'd already met me oh, once. Met I'd, I'd interviewed oh. once. They hadn't met his family yet, no, I didn't, <laughs> didn't know the rest of the clan was coming with me, so. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so then I, okay, and so I went back to school, finished up, graduated, and then started on June 15th, 1959 at Perry's as an intern pharmacist. Put in my year of internship, and got my license, and stayed there till 98. <laughs> That's yeah. All. Yeah. Right. What, interest you, what interested you about Milwaukee? Why did you come here? Well, the location, uh, close to the big city, and uh, the job offer was excellent. Uh, just seemed to fit, so we took it. Yeah, good. And you've been here ever since. Yeah. Yeah. Have you lived in the same house all this time? Or? Almost. We was on a rented a house on 23rd Street for what a year and a half or something. Until 1961, from 59 yeah. to 61, and then we bought the house we're living in now. Yeah. yeah we've yeah. got where we are now and been there ever since. That's great. Yeah. Good. Well, you have some wonderful pictures. Uh, let's talk about this one now. This was before, probably before your time. Oh yeah, isn't it? before my time. This. Uh, this is the inside of the old pharmacy, which used to be across the street. Um, everybody knows, I think, where the Perry Pharmacy building is now. It's on Main and Main, Monroe. Main and Monroe. But formerly, the Perry Pharmacy was a, right across the street, still on Main and Monroe. They had an entrance on Main Street and an entrance on Monroe Street. The store was L-shaped in what was then called the bank building, and it's where the Linko Microfish outfit is now right. So it, now the well, the Perry when you left it yeah. was on the southwest corner of Main and Monroe, yeah. and it used to be on the northwest corner, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it was L-shaped store, and and then in uh, about forty-nine or fifty, where they built the new store across the street. The Cooper family built the new store, and that's oh. when Perry's moved into that. Uh, there's a picture there of the grand opening of that. Well, here's an outside picture right. of the... This is picture number one. We're, Rich is oh, going to be showing these on television. Okay, this so is I'm number just going to put this That's the inside on, of right, the, so we know. Inside of the old store. Yeah. Part of it. But, of course, you never saw this old no, store. No, no, it was gone when I yeah, got here. Yeah, it's too... Now, would, Ray Renfro was on the show. Well, Ray would Renfro, he, worked? he was a stock boy Oh. at this place Okay. when he was in high school. Okay, and who is this man? I think that's Bill Perry. I'm not sure, but I okay. think it is. Okay. Now, how th it was an L shape, so where did it go? This is well, one end. I don't the know L. which end is this. This comes off of uh, Monroe Street, then it L'd out to Main Street. Yeah. And even then, it had the oh, stool, it had the, soda it fountain. Had the pharmacy, the, the fountain. soda fountain. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's a great. The thing. glass cases and stuff yeah. like they do in the old days. Now, that's okay. an outside shot of it there, the big now, picture. Now, this is again the old one. This yeah, is, this is the old number two we're going to put on here. Okay. Um, and I believe this is the Monroe Street entrance. Ah. Because here's the taller bank building beside it. Okay, and that was that bank building then torn down? No, it's that's still the two-story building that's there now. They've done a lot of remodeling and stuff where Linko is. Oh, okay. There used to be a couple of doctor's offices upstairs, Wheelwright and Remley, where the doctors were upstairs in that building. You had to walk up all these flights of stairs. To get to the doctor? Didn't matter how sick you were. You had to <laughs> <laughs> well, across the street the same way, across the well, street. Well, yeah, Dr. We're... Cordy's office was upstairs over the ha uh, Hamilton's, what's now uh, was Hamilton's no, furniture Hamilton's. store. Hamilton's. Oh yeah. Well, it was something else before that. Somebody else. Uh, but work, but the pharmacy across the street from Perry's. Well, there was a pharmacy also across Milwaukee, the street. Milwaukee yeah. Pharmacy was directly across the street from us. Across Main Street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a U-shaped store. The stairway in the middle, which broke the store up, went upstairs to the lawyers' offices where Roger Rook used to be and some of those guys. Really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And that's all been changed and, and torn down and stuff now. But Now, when did that pharmacy go in, the Milwaukee pharmacy? Uh, well, they were there when I came in 59. I'm not sure how long they'd been there. Not, as long, little guys as, not as long as Perry, but mm -hmm. they were there quite a while. And then uh, the final owner of that store, Lynn Schwabe, uh, died in the store one night at a heart attack or stroke or whatever and died in the store. And they couldn't run it after that, so they finally sold it out. What year was that? It was after oh, we boy. came here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In the 70s, was it? Probably. Probably 70, 71 yeah. or 2. Because they're just, by that time, it was very obvious that Fred Myers had moved into the. Yeah, things were starting to change. And Disco Mart had come in with his. Uh, Wes had had his yeah. pharmacy up yeah, there. Yeah, King Road Pharmacy came in. And yeah. Freddie's out on the McLaughlin had come in then. Right. When did um, Freddy's and McLaughlin come? That was here when we moved yeah. here in 66. 66? So we moved here in 66, yeah, but yeah. it was before that. They'd been there a while, hadn't they? Yeah, well, they're a few about years. 60 or 60. Yeah. Soon after we came out here, I think. Really? We came here in 59, 60. Yeah. yeah. You know, people talk about the downtown changing, and they blame it on the downtown. But what really happened was you started having this competition, as you said, sure. with Disco Mart out there. On well, yeah, the, yeah, and uh, the first, second yeah. king, and... Uh, and the shopping malls and the shopping strips and all that stuff started hitting. Right. And so you had uh, you had clothing stores on Main Street like the Blade. You had uh, Allen's, Allen Clay's, Allen's that changed the name. The Teenies. Uh, Teenies. Mm -hmm. You had a shoe store run by the Nichols. Mm -hmm. uh, those all just you know through attrition of age and competition and stuff just started closing up doors slowly. And, right. And that's when they started forming downtown development. Well, downtown business associations, right. of which there must have been a half a dozen or more. Or more than that, almost every <laughs> other was, year. There was the Rebels, there was the Boosters, there was all kinds of names they had for them, and, and they would all do about the same thing. They would try to get everybody together, pool money, and run ads, have big sales, stuff trying to get people down there, and it would end up, you know, it would always have a big start, and it would end up after a year or two, there's two or three guys doing all the work, mm -hmm. and they'd get tired, and that would fold, and then a couple, three years, you start a new one and do the same thing. Right. The only one that's really lasted is this one they have now, the Milwaukee Downtown Development Association, which has a paid administrator. The other that's ones, what you need. Yeah, the other ones were all volunteer. Yeah. And so that's been there and has lasted a long time. Our time is up, but I'm going to ask you to stay, and we're going to be, do another half-hour show that's going to be continuation of this because okay. we want to talk more about Perry's mm -hmm. and about downtown Milwaukee. Okay. Thank you for joining us, and look in next week, too, because we're going to have uh, more talking with the Browns today about Milwaukee Downtown Development Association and the downtown area. I'm Carol Antone, State Representative. You're watching Milwaukee Today, but really, we're looking at Milwaukee yesterday. See you again next week. Bye-bye.